Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, Enter Chazman here, and I know I'm a bit late to the party, but uh, I didn't want to let the, the moment kind of slip me by without me getting my act final reactions to episode 3 of the Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Now once again, apologize, this one is a little bit late. Uh, I've been busy doing all sorts of other videos and works throughout the week, but you know, I finally, I, I got to watch it a few days ago and I don't know, I just figured it was about time I get my opinions out there as to what happened in this episode. Now, I will say, right off the bat, episode 3, what is the episode? It's called Adar, which I actually did some, uh, some, a little, a tiny little bit of research, and apparently in the Lord of the Rings, the word Adar stands for Father, I, be I believe, from what I understand. Um, so yeah, I guess immediate thoughts on this episode? For me, I... I feel like this episode is the first misstep so far for the show. Now, not entire, not ent entirely, but there are there are a few problems that I have with this one. Um, I guess before I get right into it, um, where we left off in the second episode, um, and right where the third one exactly picks up, is I'll switch over so you guys can start seeing. Um, it, it picks up episode three picks up with Adon Deer finally um i guess just kind of coming to and realizing where he is and he is in the southlands of course where he was at but he has now um been captured by a group of orcs and uh apparently his other fallen other um elf mates or elf friends somehow and other human settlements settle settle settlers <laughs> are uh, kind of in, in this uh, encampment as well um now i didn't quite notice it but I don't know how his friends got captured. I don't even remember seeing that. Uh, feel free to let me know if that's something you guys saw. But yeah, he just kind of comes to when his two buddies from the uh, from the elf group are there. But uh, yeah, this whole scene's pretty great. I, I really enjoyed. Um, what I think Adon Deer might be one of my more favorite characters so far. Um, I mean, he's kind of stoic and a little entertaining, but there is some like emotional ties as to the human and stuff with him. If he feels very much like a like Legolas clone in a way, which don't get me wrong, don't dislike Legolas is one of my favorite characters from the original trilogy. But um, yeah, this whole scene is pretty great. Um, I'm trying to remember where exactly it ended. Oh, that's right. So it's pretty great, and at least you know you get to see him interacting with other humans and other uh, elf elf elves that have been captured. Um, finally get to see some more orcs this time, which you know I always very much enjoy. Um, go through my notes as to what, oh yeah, so, and then, I guess, I, I don't want to go scene by scene, but, um, in the very next, um, section, we get, where's he at, we get introduced to, uh, Elendil, Elendil, if you have, if you don't know who Elendil is, um, I actually didn't, um, I didn't know who he was, um, but I didn't know much about him, but, um, all I knew that was that he was in he's well he's Isildur's father um, and you do see him in the original trilogy for a split second if, uh, if you, in the very beginning of the first movie in the big the Battle of the Last Alliance I think it's was called um, he gets killed by Sauron and then Isildur takes his sword and yeah so you see him for a quick second um, I guess I'll just say right off the bat, this is immediately where I feel like the show is starting to uh, make some mistakes. Um, not that I didn't, uh, if, uh, I guess I should say, you also see a Sildor in this episode. He gets introduced here uh, later on. But for me, it, it just feels like the show is starting to become a bit bundled. Or uh, just, it's a bit top heavy in terms of like, there's so many plot elements now and there's so many different characters that I don't know I, I feel like maybe it's starting to um, it's starting you're starting to feel a little bit disconnect to certain characters because there's so much focus on other plot elements I think Game of Thrones that sometimes went through this where like you want to see certain plot lines uh, delved you know you want to see that delved more in but they spend time away. There's, it's just there's too many plot threads. Like there's, you can't focus in on certain ones. And um, me personally, a lot of the stuff that had to do with Ellen Deal and Isildur and um, Galadriel just wasn't necessarily doing it. If you were wondering where this goes, um, 
in really cool fashion though is um so Ellen Dill picks them up and then eventually her and Halbrand find their way going over to Numenor which once again this is where I started to have some like final some like problems with this series not huge ones but everything here just feels a little bit off and, and I get it the show is supposed to be meant to be an adaptation um, but I, I don't know there's just some creative decisions that I'm not wholly on board with um, for instance a lot of the time that they spend here in Numenor is great like the graphics and how Numenor looks is everything you would want it to be. Um, if you don't know, in the Cimmerian or in a lot of the lore, which once again, I'm not going to act like I'm a huge lore buff of the Lord of the Rings, but I know some basic stuff. Um, I believe in the original story, the Numenorians were like um, this great fantastical like war culture, or like they were some of like the strongest warriors of this realm. Um, I believe they were men, um, and yeah, and, and, and they're depicted in a lot of ways as like super tall and s extremely great at fighting and all that sorts of stuff, and it is a bit disappointing that once you start seeing some of the humans, some of the Numenorians in this land, they're really not that great. They're like normal sized height, they're not, they don't seem particularly well deft in fighting because uh, Halbrand gets gets approached by like four of them and he easily not easily but he like viciously takes out four of them at once which it's like if they were Numenorians should they have been taken out that easily I I don't know I, it could be nitpicks once again but the, 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 the common thread with this entire show is like what exactly did Amazon get the rights to I mean I understand that they got the rights to they, they didn't get the rights to the entire Cimmerian. so but they got the rights to certain aspects um i know they can't exactly like delve too deep into the morgoth stuff that's why they kind of brush over that but what i'm getting at is that it just it just feels like they're they're some of their liberties are just just not fulfilling i guess in a way like some of the creative decisions are just not where you'd want to go like the Numenorians is such a cool and such a cool part of lore that they, it just kind of feels a little bit off. Um, but yeah, once again, I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna go on a rant as to all my problems. But yeah, so the Numenorians not 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 tall, not don't seem particularly adept in fighting. Um, they have some connection connective threads connections to the elves, which is cool. Galadriel, while she's here, um, kind of. Um, connects to in a certain extent with um Elendil because he's more in tune with some of the elf culture um apparently in the Numenorian past um the Numen the 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 Galadriel's folks her predecessors gave this island in this area to the Numenorians as I'm not quite sure what I'm a, uh, but it's all really cool all of that stuff um but yeah the, it's just another thing i didn't think about but like when when the when the queen of numenor when all of her other subjects come into come into contact with galadriel this like royal royal bloodline elf um they don't realize it's her until like she has to tell everyone in the middle of this court i guess i'll go to that scene uh where is it right here yeah, like, no one knows who she is until the... And it's just, like, everyone's so surprised and everyone's, like, so anti-elf. And it's, like, you realize this whole... this Your whole, like, existence of where you're at is because of the elves. Now, granted, I'm... Sh I don't know. I'm not... Like, once again, I'm not of huge lore. I'm sure there's wars and all that stuff involved. But, um... Everyone's just so kind of combative in this scene. And it's, like, even Galadriel, to an extent, is, like... She's telling everyone what to do, what's going to happen, what they better do, or they want war. And it's just like, man, you, you know, you should probably walk on eggshells. You're in a land you've never been in, and I don't know. Everyone just seems kind of off in these scenes. I feel like that some of the, once again, some of the creative decisions in terms of, like, how people are interacting with one another just... At times, I guess it feels super typical in terms of, like, television series. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so once again, all of this stuff with 
Numenor, like, it seems cool, but then, I don't know, just the way they're kind of going about showing all these characters and all the historical stuff out here is, uh, where is he at? Here's Isildur, but, um, yeah, Isildur and his sister, which I believe in the books was his, what is a brother, um, but they changed it to a sister, which, not a big deal, but, um, they, my problem with him is also that, like, they make him, like, they kind of, like, dramatically make him seem like a really, like, um, really, like, heroic and stuff, he, like, saves a person and, I don't know, it seems like they're kind of building this guy to be the main character, and it's like... I, I, they just make him seem too incredible and too heroic. It's like, a Sildor, yes, he technically is the one that kills Sauron, so he does have a major part and role to play, but he is most definitely not, like, a an infallible character. I mean, you know, he's corrupted by the ring, and you could partly blame him for much of the events that happened in the Third Age. So I... It just seems odd to, like... I don't know, they, they definitely seems like they're building him up, and it's like... And that's another thing, is like, I mentioned it earlier, but like, just the fact that they've introduced Elendil and Isildur this early in the show is like... I'm getting very much like, um... Uh... What is it, the Halo TV series flashbacks, where... It's like you're introducing certain characters and plot elements that, like, you should probably wait on. You shouldn't be introducing these major characters. And it's like some of these people are so integral to the world that, like, I don't know. Uh, once again, I, I feel like they're throwing in a, a lot of plot threads, a lot of elements. And it's like, maybe maybe they should have started off a little bit narrow, narrower. It just, I don't know. It feels very, like, they're, they're going broad. They're trying to cover every little thing that's going on in the world and hopefully they can you know nail the landing but i don't know it may go game of thronesy where there's just a lot for them to try and balance out i don't know but uh yeah let me just choose another scene um yeah this queen character she's terrible like she's really like I don't know, she's very, like, kind of resentful, resentful and hateful of the elves and Galadriel, and she's, like, plotting in the backgrounds as to what she's going to do about Galadriel, and I think what they're kind of attempting to do here is um, they're, like, planting the seeds of the downfall of Numenor, which, again, that's, like, a, that's such a big plot point in the Lord of, or in the Lord, in the Cimmerian, in the, the Tolkien world like that the fall of Numenor is such a big deal that like they're introducing it this early because I think pretty clearly they're um they're like pointing towards this queen as I, I think clearly she's been um tempted by Sauron or tempted by some evil um group because there's a scene towards the end where she is I don't know if I can find it this early oh yeah here she is I don't remember who she's talking to somebody and it all seems kind of evil but I don't know yeah once again not crazy about her character and all the new it's actually kind of disappointing now that I'm thinking about it how kind of meh on the Numenor plotline because you would think that would have been like one of the better ones but I'll hold off on it it's still very early we're only on episode three um let me try and find where I was so this is where we get back to Adandir um, uh, there was a scene where he, his one friend gets killed, the one elf guy, um, and in order for there to be, like, a continuation of the work that the elves and humans are doing, the orcs need someone to cut down a tree, and this scene I actually really appreciated because, you know, if, if, if you, if you know about the, the, the lore, the elves and all that stuff, like, they're very, like, like environmental creatures they're very i guess i don't want to say spiritual but like in a way they're very in tune with nature and how things are and stuff and uh this is a pretty great scene of adon deer being forced to like cut down a tree to kind of allow for their construction to keep uh, going on and he's just super somber about it you can tell he's like 
um, he's about to do something he's gonna he hates himself for and that he regrets and he kind of does like a little prayer or something before cutting it down or something it, it's a very great and like humanizing scene I re once again Aaron Deere is like one of the better characters in my opinion so far for the show um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so yeah this whole scene I thought was kind of weird um, so here, th there was a point where Ellen Deal, um, he starts, like, he gets given the task of the queen of watching over Galadriel and kind of making sure she doesn't try and jump the ship, per se. And uh, it turns out he actually can speak Elvish and talks to her and tells her that they have, like, um, like a research area where the previous elves of the area resided, like... And he's just like, oh, I'll take you there if you want, and blah, blah, blah. He's like a... He, he's a very, um... I'm trying to think of how to say this. He's, he's just, he's very open to things. He's not, like, he's not evil or anything. So he's just like, you know, I'll watch over you, but if you want, I'll take you here if you were interested. Um, I wonder if, to an extent, because they don't get many elves, maybe because of his uh, previous ties to elves, and he can speak elvish and all that, like... Maybe he's just more inclined to kind of just interact because he wants to, you know, learn more or anything like that. But, um, yeah, this whole scene's kind of weird. Like, she, he takes her on a trip to go look and she's just like, she's enjoying things a, a little bit too much, I thought. And it kind of goes on for a while, but um, whatever. I guess it's in the grand picture. It's not that big a deal. Um... Now there's this scene here with Halbrand who is wanting to live amongst the Numenorians and is not wanting to return home unlike Gal Galadriel. Um, and then and this scene, this direction, this scene began to take me in a direction of thought that I wasn't really expecting. Um, I was actually kind of thinking throughout a lot of these scenes that Halbrand is like a like some sort of rendition or. or or being similar to Sauron because it's just there were so many similarities I mean I wrote them down there were so many similarities as to like between him um, he just like he knew he knew he knows so much about like the region about what the enemy's doing and and uh, he comes to this blacksmith looking for a job and he's talking about how great of a blacksmith he is and if you don't know Sauron in the lore was a blacksmith who, uh, you know, was one of the best blacksmiths in the in the region, in the air, in the in, the, in, in Middle Earth or whatever. Uh, I mean, yeah, he created the rings and all sorts of other things, you know, with the help of uh, Celebrimbor, Celebrimbor. So, it, it, I don't know. It's just like the blacksmith stuff, how much information he knows, and then there's a scene with him going bat crazy and killing four almost four guys and. Like, I don't know, I just, I was thinking he has a dark side, he he has some sort of evil tyings, but I think they're avoiding, they're not going to go down that line. They've gone, they've instead turned the direction of turning him into an Aragorn type, where I think he has some sort of familiar ties to the Southlands now, where like his previous family or, or kin were like leaders of that area. Yeah, what's uh, not a not a plot I'm super invested in, but yeah, that's where they, I guess they're deciding to go. Uh, there's all of that. Uh, this scene is where Galadriel she gets back to the the the, the previous elves' is, um, den, pretty much, and this is where she kind of starts piecing things back together and figures out that this symbol she's been following the whole time. Um, is a representation of the Southlands, and it also represents the return of Sauron. It's like his symbol and whatnot, which, of course, is something I'm always going to... Oh, yeah, here it is right here. Something I'm always going to be excited about, getting to see Sauron, good old Sauri, come back. Um, where else, where else can we go? Uh... I don't know. Anyways, here we go. It goes back to Nori and the whole side plot that's going off with the half, with the half foots. Um, oh. and
And for me, at least, I will just say anything going on with the half foots. I'm not totally invested in. I, I don't know. Just like I, at first, I really liked the Hoppy and Nori characters, but now it's just like they're spending too much time with them, and I, I don't really like where they're going with the stranger. We haven't figured out who he is yet. I'm, I'm assuming he's Gandalf. I mean, I don't think they've done anything to kind of you know throw me off that trail I, I still think he's Gandalf somehow I don't know who else he could be I mean could he be he has to be a wizard I mean I've heard some theories that he's Sauron that he's Gandalf that he's Saruman um, I think someone threw out that he could be a um, an IR is it IR no 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 whatever um Oh man, I can't think of the word. Whatever the ah, uh, I don't remember the creature that 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 Gandalf fights at the at uh. Oh my gosh, I normally would know this. <laughs> uh, my brain's a little cooked. I don't know. There's there's just there's so many different ideas people have thrown out that that he is, and um, I will suggest if you guys are interested about like stuff like that, go go check out the Broken Sword on YouTube. Um, they do a lot of videos talking about theories and fan theories and stuff that's going on with the show. I very much enjoy watching those. <clears throat> but yeah, once again, I guess back to the Halffoots. This whole plot is just kind of so-so. It, it, I'm not cr totally crazy about it. The only thing I'm very intrigued by is still who is this stranger. I guess I will say, if, if it ends up just being Gandalf, I guess I, I will be a tiny bit disappointed. Um, just because that's such an easy route to go is just for him to be Gandalf and I don't know there's some people that have said that uh, technically in the lore Gandalf has like multiple names at different points in his life and this guy could be like Gandalf's first phase or second phase or something of his life which I guess could be mildly interesting um, let's see do, 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 do. Oh, I... Uh, I mean, I guess that's about the, the only thing I'll have to talk about la last is just this last scene. Um, this last scene's great. This is by far, probably in my opinion, the best scene of the of episode three. Um, in this scene, it shows uh, Adon Deer and his fellow elves trying to make a break out of their little prison campment. Um, and here, there's all sorts of like really cool things that happens. Um, as they're trying to break out, there's like a, um, the orcs obviously don't like light and then the orcs sick like a, like a warg on them. And when they, the one orc calls for a warg, I was like, yes, a warg. <laughs> um, if you don't know, wargs are like the, the weird, like dog creatures in this world. Um, you see them in all sorts of different locations and, in some of the Shadow of Mordor games and you see them in, uh, you see them in obviously the original trilogy, you see them in the Hobbit um, but yeah, all, they're all sorts of great. Anytime I get to see a warg, I'm always super happy. Um, oh, here's one. Look how cute. Look how cute. So cute. Who's a good boy? Uh, but yeah, it, it kind of builds up to where just, um, the one elf is able, or Adam Deer is able to help him escape. And after the warg kills, like, a bunch, almost all of their people that are, that were fighting back. Uh, but once he escapes, there ends up, um, you know, being archers set up outside and they kill him and Adam Deer gets pulled back in. And then the episode ends on the most intriguing thing that happens. Uh, where's he at? I'm trying to get him. Yeah, there we go. Um, this character, which from what I understand is a new character to this lore. I, um, cause at first I thought he was, I was like, Ooh, is that Sauron? But no, I I believe this is a character called... Well, the episode's called Adar. And this character is called Adar, which basically means father in, you know, in that speech. Speak. But, um, he clearly looks like an elf figure. So, the only question is... or The only question is now, who exactly is Adar? Is this some sort of disciple of Sauron or Morgoth? Or is this... You know, some fallen... I mean, I'm assuming he's some sort of fallen entity. Um, I'd be very curious. I mean, just exactly his origins. 
how he became ensnared by Sauron, you know, as so many people have been. But, uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see where they go with this. Um, the, I mean, I, he kind of looks like Loki from <laughs> from this angle. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I really got to say. I mean, for me, this episode wasn't super thrilling. I would say by far this is episode three is my least favorite episode out of the three. It's not a bad one. It's not a great one. Um, I'm still kind of intrigued by where they're going, but I'll be honest. They could lose me here in the next few episodes if they keep kind of going down the path they're going. Uh, I'm just hoping some of the revelations, like who is Adar, who is Gandalf, who is Halbrand. I mean, man, you gotta, they gotta do something super interesting to keep me kind of enthralled in the show. Because everything's just been kind of so-so. And, you know, especially with them, I feel like they kind of dropped the ball on Numenor. Um... I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear. Um, are you, uh, I'm kind of excited for episode four, but definitely I feel like these could be um, very integral episodes as to whether I stay interested or not. But um, anyways, you know, how, how did what did you guys think about episode three? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Um, I most definitely would love to hear any of your theories on who is Adar, who is... Um, the Stranger, who is Halbrand. Um, overall, what did you guys think of episode three? Did you, are, are you higher on it? Are you lower on it than I am? Um, yeah, but anyways, I hope you're excited for episode four. I'm very much looking forward to it. Feel free to keep an eye out on that. And yeah, that's what I got going on. Um, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I, I love you. Please be safe. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode of Enter Chaz Manor. My next talk about more of the Rings of Power. So uh, anyways, thank you so much, guys. I love you. I will see you again. Bye. Hey now, I see you made it through the video and liked or even possibly loved it. Well, if you want to see any more additional content or you'd like to get into contact with me, consider checking out some of my social medias right here. And if you'd like to go above and beyond and want to support my channel monetarily, here is also a couple places where you can do so. And if nothing else, simply liking, sharing, and subscribing would make me the happiest Chaz man on the planet. <laughs>